Welcome to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Kathy Buccio, coming to you from the Baptist Health South Florida studios. Today, we're discussing plant-based diets, how you can get enough protein on a plant-based diet, nutrients of concerns for a vegetarian or vegan diet, and ways to get started, and much, much more. And joining us to talk about nutrition and health is Shannon Allen. She will be sharing how her personal experiences having a son with type 1 diabetes and a husband who is a professional athlete have led her to become a food entrepreneur and a healthy foods advocate. And also joining us is our friend, Amy Kimberlane, registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator at Baptist Health South Florida. Amy will show us how we can eat more healthy with a plant-based diet. Welcome back. Amy and Shannon, Thank it's you. so great to have you Thank here on the you. show. And the first thing I want to ask you is the word food, um, food entrepreneur. Yes. What is that exactly? Well, we, sometimes we say food entrepreneur because mm -hmm. it's kind of like we blend those words I like together. Food entrepreneur. Food entrepreneur. Yes. Um, well, basically, it's it's a person, it's an individual that steps into the food world and creates a concept that is, I think, vastly needed. So that real marriage of food, knowledge, or inspiration, and entrepreneurship. So I'm the creator of Grown. We are the first ever 100% USDA organic certified fast food restaurant with a drive through in the country. Mm. And um, our flagship location is right here in South Miami. And we are incredibly proud of our organic integrity, our customers, our team, and the way that this community has really enveloped us with love and support. Um, we are the future of fast food, and we couldn't be happier to be launching it right here at home. Guess where I'm going for lunch today? I'm going through that <laughs> drive through Okay, so one of the things that's, I think, really important and really resonates with you is your son's own journey and this is what sort of propelled you for this mission that you are on today so can you talk to us a little about what happened with your son and what pushed you in that direction yeah Kathy such a great question I mean well first of all I would just say that I never ever intended to be in the food business as a singer and an actress I mean I was in a girl group on Motown Records mm -hmm. I was uh, in a movie called Girl Fight that won at Sundance Film Festival I actually did a PBS show called Sesame English where we taught kids from other countries how to speak English I was really in front of the camera right. This was kind of like my wheelhouse, and I really never intended to be in the food world. I mean, being a server, being a waitress, a hostess, those were the things that were kind of like my fallbacks. Right. Um, I loved being in the service industry. I loved ingratiating myself to the customer, and I loved trying to put out fires for people that were having challenges. But it's a really tough business, and it can be really sad sometimes if you're a people pleaser like I am, and you always want to fix everything for everyone. And sometimes you just can't do that in a 15-minute interaction. You know, someone comes in, and you want to create a wow experience for them, and they just lost their job, or they got denied their mortgage it's not going to be a great experience no matter how good your service is so I really kind of thought in my life you know I, I want to do everything I can do in front of the camera and be an asset to my community and to contribute to the GNP in my household but I don't want it to be food right and then here comes along yes Walker in 2008 my middle child our middle child Walker was diagnosed in an incredibly dramatic fashion during the NBA finals my husband was playing for the Boston Celtics we were mm -hmm. playing against the Lakers and between a Monday and a Friday Walker taught himself how to say juice mommy because he was just so incredibly thirsty and Amy you know this yeah. better than anyone um, the symptoms of type 1 look just like the flu so he was incredibly lethargic. He was peeing through his diaper. He started vomiting, mm -hmm. and he was excessively thirsty. Right. And everyone in my life, including me, missed the signs. I thought maybe he had a little food poisoning. Right. Maybe he was, a, you know, had a little bit of a virus. But my, it was my husband who said something's really wrong with Walker. And because of Walker's challenges, I really threw myself into a life of activism and advocacy, sat on the International Board of Directors for the JDRF, the Jaws and Diabetes Center, raised a ton of money for the DRI here locally in Miami. But during that process, I realized that this wasn't just about insulin, checking his finger, and making sure that we were essentially his pancreas right. um, and helping him reach his full genetic potential. It was also about encouraging people that didn't have type 1 but were living with type 2 to never trade places with Walker, right. to never take that step from um, living a life with challenges, not having a healthy diet and exercise, to becoming insulin dependent. And I'll tell you really quickly, one night I was literally on my way to Whole Foods to make dinner. Walker was two, he was in his uh, car seat, and I think I was pregnant with our fourth. And I was on my way to buy groceries a regular night like any other night. He was newly diagnosed, and this was my kind of new normal. And then I looked back at him in his car seat, and he was shaky and low. You know those warning yeah. signs. And I pulled over really quick and I checked his blood sugar and he was 49. Wow. Anybody at home living with diabetes will know that you can't get to zero. That means lights out. So I was in a panic. I needed food and it I needed so it scary. now. 
Yeah, so like that schlep to the grocery store, running through a grocery store, buying groceries, going home, making a meal was out the window. And I realized I needed food from a drive through window. And even though I grew up on fast food, traditional fast food, my mom was a realtor, we lived at a drive through window. Um, for a child that's insulin dependent, who already gets his finger pricked 10 to 15 times a day and gets seven insulin injections, I can't give him processed food. He needs the good stuff. Yeah. You know, he needs the organic stuff, whole grains, lean proteins, tons of fruits and veggies, and none of that was available for me with the convenience of a drive through That was the moment that Grown was born. I created the thing that I wished existed in my own life for my son. Right. He's my why. A Amy, she speaks about these symptoms of, of diabetes, and being a diabetes right. educator, they sound so familiar, I imagine. It's very yeah. scary. I think just to Shannon's point, I think with type 1 diabetes, unfortunately, that is the, what we try and get the message out. What are the symptoms? Because ultimately, if you're not clear with the symptoms, as Shannon said, type 1 can be kind of masked by thinking it's the flu. So kudos to your mom intuition and really, truly taking... <laughs> no, honest, you know, it's I one of those... I have to be honest, this was really my husband, and I have to well, give him the credit for name. this. Yeah, yeah, because I really was just so caught up in this right. moment. And there's But it's outside of the norm is what you said. Exactly. And that's why he noticed it, you know, wetting his diaper when maybe he wouldn't really have done that it before. And that's a telltale sign yeah. of type one. You know, so again, it's kind of like at the end stage, right, before moving on and you guys caught it. So, yeah. And it's, now we do have an organic restaurant here with a drive through yes. window. Thank yes. you, Shannon, for that. So what is the mission for Grown? And literally, we want to change the world one organic certified fast food meal at a time. I mean, it's an incredibly ambitious goal. I'm not going to be satisfied until we have 9,400 units. I mean, I would love, maybe there isn't a grown on every corner, but right. I would love for families, busy families, um, moms, two dads, grandparents, active seniors, millennials, it doesn't matter. I would love for busy people that are looking for better to right. drive down a highway, go to an airport, be in a college campus, be in a hospital lobby. And have that option for And have organic. an option. You know, there's, you can get a burger and fries anywhere. Right. You can get a taco or a fried chicken wing anywhere. But where can you get a cold pressed juice made with 100% organic certified ingredients with the convenience of a drive through Where can you get a gluten free wrap with house made tuna? or a bowl of chicken tortilla soup, or a fully vegan More menu item. More importantly, where it doesn't break the bank as right. well. Because I think that's another reason that we've talked about, Amy, yeah. on the show, that sometimes people get scared of this organic concept because they think, I'll never be able to eat that. Right. But you it's guys have to remember, the number one and number two sellers of organics on the planet are Costco and Walmart. Mm -hmm. I mean, we actually have a grown inside of a Walmart in Orlando. It's amazing. And it's, that's how it's going to make sense for people, when it's accessible and affordable, to everyone. Absolutely. Now, yeah. it was also important to you to cultivate these relationships with local farmers, local organic markets as well. So yes. tell me about that relationship and the quality of the product that you bring. Oh my gosh. Well, last night we actually were really blessed and fortunate to attend the Slow Food Movement's Snail of Approval Dinner. Yes. Um, here in Miami, mm -hmm. uh, Michelle Benish is incredible. She is like the grand dame of <laughs> Slow Food Movement. Right. And so we were all at the Palms Hotel, and this was a consortium of chefs, growers, producers, chocolatiers, you name it, that really the best and brightest here in our city that work with local organic certified farmers and local farmers and local growers. And having those relationships with the people that do this real work right here, 20 minutes south of us in the Redlands and Homestead, is exceedingly important to us. Mm -hmm. People don't realize, but the average farm worker's life expectancy in America that works with conventionally grown food is 45. Wow. The average life expectancy for a farm worker that works in America on an organic farm is 55. Mm -hmm. This is hard work. We do not take care of the people that feed us. So for us to be able to have those relationships with Bee Haven and Paradise Farms Organics, um, and establish those relationships with Cool Runnings Farms right here in our backyard is something that we're incredibly proud of. And Amy, I want to get back to basics really quickly. I want to know what is a plant-based diet? Yeah. Because I think a lot of people probably tell have that us. question as well. People so want to know. Us and us. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great kind of term, and it unfortunately doesn't have a definition, but just to bring it to light, it really truly means predominantly eating whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and legumes. Where it's an umbrella term, and when you look at plant-based diets, it can incorporate anything on the one side of the spectrum that's vegan all the way to the other side of the spectrum that's eating less animal protein. So the, the main concept in being is that if you look at the plate, and you're trying to generalize and look at protein and portions, it's only a quarter of the plate. It's not the main event. Right. And so it's re, you know, 
forming the thought of what people are eating, looking at their plates and truly taking it into context to knowing that I need to maybe minimize and obviously eat more plants. And we'll talk about all the health benefits associated with eating more plants, obviously within whole grains as well. But that's what plant-based is. It's an umbrella term and it has a wide spectrum. I want to talk about that wide spectrum because I know that many people say, well, I eat fish socially or it doesn't always exclude right. animals. So what does that mean? Is it still plant-based? Absolutely. And okay. I think, again, you know, the interesting part about plant-based is this is how we have always supposed to have been eating. It's just unfortunately now it's brought to the forefront in talking about it because everybody is trying to make the change towards improvements in health. And I think ultimately when you're talking about a pescatarian, which is what you're discussing, it's where somebody might eat fish occasionally, but it might not be at every meal, right? right. Or now they're eating meat occasionally. And again, it's not at every meal. So again, coming back to the forefront of looking at portions and amounts and minimizing. And again, there's different reasons why people choose to eat the way that they do. But again, ultimately plant-based means more plants. Right. So mm. we're going we're to get more into that, but coming up, let's be honest. The first question you have in talking about a plant-based diet is, how am I going to feed my whole family on this? We're going to be discussing how you can get enough protein on a plant-based diet, which is, Amy, and you and I have discussed so many yeah. times, sometimes people are a little bit weary of. Okay. <laughs> so why should someone stick to a plant-based diet or start one? I think there's a lot of different reasons, Kathy, why people end up going towards plant-based. And again, the, the spectrum is there in looking at, is it a taste or a preference issue? Is it for health reasons? Is it for an ethics or environmental reason? Multitude of reasons why people go plant-based. But then on the other side of it could be health reasons as well. So again, wide spectrum, why people go plant-based. But to answer your question about protein, it's the number one question we get asked. Can you get enough protein? You know, again, though, we're just showing now some of the reasons why you would choose plant-based. And I always give the example of myself as a kid I would chew meat spit it out and then try and throw it to the dog and there was no dog <laughs> <laughs> just a big uh, mess I just, under there. I never enjoyed the taste or the texture and again if you flash forward into studying in, in school I knew I didn't need to eat it right and so it comes back to just really creating a healthy overall plan to be able to get enough and a sufficient amount of protein but ultimately you can totally do that we overeat protein mm -hmm. you know when we talk about amounts and how much somebody needs we're definitely at a meal sitting down and having too much regardless you still have to plan it and make sure that you're getting adequate amounts within a nutrient dense type food. So they meet that requirement, that protein requirement, and it has nothing to do really with the calorie intake, correct? Well, when you meet a sufficient calorie need for your needs every day, it typically equates to enough protein. But again, I have to caution people in saying that not every plant-based diet is healthy, mm. right? You know, yes. chips are vegan, right? You know, again, Oreos you're coming, are vegan. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 is not vegan. You eat Oreos all day, guess what? That's not healthy. No, you're gonna end up in this hospital. <laughs> But again, when we come back to it and really looking at, obviously, the concept, I'm not also here to say you can never have the Oreos or the cupcakes, et cetera. It's well-planned, healthy, right. overall balanced meals. And yes, when we look at a quarter of the plate to be protein, whatever substitute that you're using for a plant-based protein can meet sufficient needs. You're looking at amounts and how much somebody needs in a day just at 0.8 grams per, kilo per kilogram. And to put that into perspective, for the average male, that's only 56 grams per day, Kathy. So think about a three-ounce piece of animal protein, that's 21 grams. Wow. Whereas if I was equating that to a plant source at my meal, I can get upwards of 15 grams. Not as concentrated as say animal protein, but still a sufficient amount. And I think that that's that myth that we need to let go. You can get enough protein by eating plant-based protein. And you actually brought show and tell. I yeah. love when we do show yeah. and tell, you bring products. <laughs> okay, so talk to us about some of the items that you brought and how they fit. And, and Shannon, please feel free to interject as well, yeah. how they fit into this plant-based diet. So again, if we're just highlighting protein and again, looking at alternative sources, I think sometimes people are at the question as to what can I eat? Again, nuts and nut butters are always a perfect substitute. So think in the morning, maybe you're having some toast and now you put some nut butter on top with a few pieces of fruit. Again, overall balanced meal just from that alone and you've gotten a multitude of different groups at your plate and with protein. Now we can go towards seeds as well. So any nut or seed, beans are another alternative source as well for protein. And again, now here with some of the newer ones that people might not know how to eat or cook and taste, you can have them at Grown. Or again, we have different tasty videos as well on Baptist Health that you can check out. But tofu and tempeh are other forms of alternative sources of plant protein. It's a soybean, one's fermented and one is not. But again, how to cook it, etc. Those are all ways to start bringing it into the mix at your mealtime. But those are plant-based mm -hmm. proteins that you can include. You get protein from all the vegetables and obviously with whole grains. Again, making that whole well-balanced meal, Kathy. And Shannon, mm. what are some of your best sellers at Grown? Well, it depends. I mean, in the morning, yeah. I would say our gluten-free blueberry pancakes. Mm. 
Yeah, too. and that's really great because at Grown, we really pay attention to food allergies as well. It's not just about organic and freshly prepared and local. Um, we have a ton of people that are celiac or have Hashimoto's or yeah. Lyme disease or are recovering from cancer, and they really have to have organic food. Right. Um, but specifically, people that are celiac um, are terrified of cross-contamination. So we only have a gluten-free pancake on the menu, so no one ever has to worry about, oh, well, what if the regular, we don't have a regular pancake mix. Right. Um, Fresh pressed juices are love greens, handful of spinach, kale, celery, green apple, pineapple, ginger, parsley. Um, that's our most popular fresh pressed juice. In the afternoon, salad, sandwiches, and wraps are Havana is our most popular. It's pico de gallo, <laughs> black bean salsa, Miami. yeah, tortilla <laughs> strips. I mean, it's very Miami. Right. Um, and then in the evenings, actually, I would say that most people love to get either a fully plant-based meal, like this new menu item we have from The Green Print, which Marco Borges was on your show. Love you, Marco. You're amazing. Um, <laughs> He has um, a whole full new menu in addition to our regular grown menu mm -hmm. called Green Print Approved. And we have these incredible uh, mushroom chorizo tacos that oh people goodness, are that loving. delightful. Yes, but also salmon is a really big popular item for us. We do grilled salmon. You can get it blackened or as a salmon burger mm -hmm. with like sweet potato mash and Brussels sprouts. One of the things I was really yeah. interested in, Amy, and maybe you can answer this question for me. Um, I think people sometimes have this idea that when you're getting protein from an animal, like that's real protein. But right. what people don't realize <laughs> is that we're actually getting it secondarily. So animals are getting their protein from plants. From plants. And then we're eating animals. Ultimately, we're getting our protein from plants. Right. Yeah. So we could kind of like cut out the middleman <laughs> and just go right to the plants. And that's kind of the misconception that Amy, every time Amy comes on, we talk about this because I think we do have to throw it out the window that we can get that protein, we can get what we need from plants. Is this true? Yeah. Absolutely. I think, Shannon, to your point, you know, again, when I was in school, there used to be the notion that you had to have rice and beans to have a complete protein when you're eating things from a plant-based source. That's not true. It's your total intake throughout the day and getting protein from plants throughout. And those combinations will allow you to get the sufficient amount of essential amino acids that you need. And I think that that's sometimes that connotation of thinking you're not getting a, a good source, right? Or because it's not animal-based. And, you know, we're going back to kind of the amounts and just to it, again put it into perspective we're overeating protein yeah you know and I think that when you come back to a plant-based protein I gave the example of toast with peanut butter again if you have a nice whole grain piece of toast gluten-free or, or regular regardless you're getting at least three to four grams of protein per slice of toast now I add on the peanut butter and now I've got up to five more grams again if you do a plant-based milk versus milk again all different ways to add in additional you're upwards of 15 grams at that one meal again perspective being you only need 45 a day for females right mm -hmm. right so now I've gotten a third of my intake at just one of the meals and I'm on point. And again, sometimes, like I mentioned, the animal proteins are more concentrated. So again, do they leave you feeling fuller longer? Possibly. But that's where I call people out and say, that's why we need more vegetables, more fiber, mm. because the fiber also helps to keep us fuller longer. So again, it's kind of this mixed notion of not enough protein or not the right kind of protein because it's not from the animal. Sure. But again, I think we're moving in the right direction mm -hmm. in what we're talking about, how, you know, obviously having you here today and really bringing it to the forefront. Mm -hmm that plant-based is where it's at. And right. again, the irony being, this is how we've always been told to eat, and now it's now where we're going. Right. right. And I want you to give our audience an idea of all the different types of plant-based diets there are, because it's right. not just one. I think that's another misconception mm -hmm. that it's like, well, I'm not going to eat a salad all day, every day. And that's not what plant-based means. No, and again, we alluded to it earlier, but again, on that spectrum, on that grid that you're looking at, it's just simply showing what you include versus exclude, right? And so again, I technically am a lacto-ovo vegetarian. Um, what does that mean? I'll include milk, cheese, and eggs, right? And so that's the inclusion of what I have. Whereas if it's someone that's just a lacto-vegetarian, they'll do dairy, but not eggs. Right. So it's just a good descriptor for us to be able, if I'm seeing or talking to somebody, for me to know then what maybe nutrients that they would need or require from an alternative source. Because remember, like we said, it's going back to planning it out and eating healthfully. It's not just going in and not knowing what you're getting. Go ahead, Shannon. I was going to say, one of the things that I think is like this huge misconception for people is that for a long time, you said what we should be eating and what we've been taught to eat. I think that people have forgotten what real food is, yeah. right? Like I, my kids play basketball. I, that, maybe that's not a shock for people, but <laughs> <laughs> I have five kids. Four of them are boys under the age of 14. And when we go to these tournaments and, and AAU tournaments and whatever, basketball games, after games, I'm seeing kids with like Gatorade and Cheetos. And, oh, you know, Cheetos are great. Everybody Where loves Cheetos. Where are you handing out well. the grown well, exactly. sandwiches? Where it's, are you? Hello, right. So, <laughs> It's like we need grown everywhere, everybody. But I mean, sometimes I'm like, guys, you realize that none of this is food. Right. These are food like substances. There isn't one discernible nutrient dense ingredient in these products. Right. And Michael right. Pollan, who's like a very famous author, um, has this, this quote where it's like, don't eat anything that your grandmother wouldn't recognize as food. And I think as it mm -hmm. pertains to a plant based diet, all of this stuff, guys, is real 
food. You've got radishes, you have kale, you have beans, you have you know ground nuts. If, if it's processed in a plant, it's not something that we should be digesting. Right. There's no kale in Cheetos. Amen. <laughs> There's no <laughs> cheese in Cheetos. There's no cheese in Cheetos. <laughs> Only that mysterious orange powder. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I just want to take a minute to remind our viewers to call in and join the conversation. If you have a question for Shannon or Amy about plant-based diets, organic food, nutrition, and health, they have it for you. That number is 855 796 Four four seven five. There was a term, Amy, that I want to go back to, and I've been hearing yeah. it a lot. Flexitarian. Absolutely. Mm. What does that mean? Again, I think they had to put a term with it to explain to people what they're doing, but that's literally the flexibility to eat meat when they want to. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're out with friends, you look at the menu, something sounds appetizing, and then you want to have it, right? It doesn't mean that you're necessarily eating meat all the time. And again, it just comes back to their focus is plant-based for the majority, and again, occasionally having an animal protein. It doesn't mean it's every day. Right. And I want to go back to something you said. We were actually talking. You said the term healthy is so subjective. Yeah. So when it comes to healthy eating, what is the golden rule you sort of live by, especially when preparing meals for your family? I always tell my kids, don't worry about counting calories, count chemicals. Mm, because I think the one thing that we don't talk about enough is that our food already is starting damaged. Most people eat a conventionally grown diet yeah. and it's getting sprayed with glyphosate, pesticides, herbicides, human vaccines given to animals, and all of that stuff destroys our second brain, our gut bacteria, mm -hmm. and it sets us on a path of inflammation. Mm -hmm. So we're already starting out, most of us are starting out inflamed. There was a study that I just read, um, I sit on the board of directors for the Culinary Institute of America, and they just published this massive study that came out, they republished it, of like four different families that they followed for a week and they completely removed regular food and they introduced only organic food. They tested them, right. their, their urine samples in the beginning of the week and at the end of the week. And they found that all of these families had ranges of glyphosate, um, which is weed killer essentially, yeah. that were completely harmful. There is no safe percentage for glyphosate wow. for young children. <sighs> So when they removed conventionally grown food and they added organic whole grain foods, fresh fresh vegetables, um, lean meats back into their diet, but 100% organic, their, their levels of uh, glyphosate exposure went down by 85%. Wow. 85%. So in my house, my rule is don't worry about counting calories, worry about counting chemicals. So we eat real food. We eat rice, we eat beans, we eat veggies. My husband is a pescatarian. He only eats fish on occasion. Um, I do more of a flex flexitarian diet where I eat intuitively. Right. Sometimes I'm completely vegan. Sometimes I'm raw vegan. Sometimes I'm vegetarian. I'll have a little dairy. I'll have a little cheese. Right. Sometimes I'm doing lacto You don't, you don't restrict vegetarian. yourself. Right. I'm like about, we were talking about this earlier, about mindfulness. Mm -hmm. In a moment, I may want, you know, a uh, bolognese sauce with a little bit of organic pasta. Well, I'm going to have three bites of that. Right. right. I really like to live in the moment. Um, it's what's best for you. Right. One of the things I've learned from Marco is when you're adopting a plant based lifestyle, you don't have to be so strict with this where it's like this is so overwhelming for me to just go full into plants that I can't commit to it. Instead, commit to making your life and your health and your community and environment a little bit better at every meal. And we're going to talk more about that. So if you have a question for Amy or Shannon, please call in using the toll-free number 855-796-4475. And remember, you can take the health channel wherever you go by visiting our website, allhealthtv.com. Now, here's another big plus, and you, some, you mentioned this, mm -hmm. actually, that a lot of people that come to Grown also are maybe recovering from cancer or are in remission. Sure. And this kind of food can help fight cancer. So many evidence-based studies that show how much of this organic diet, how much of this plant-based diet as well helps those fighting infections or diseases. So how important is that, Shannon, not only in your restaurant, but Amy, I want to get to you first and then we'll go into the sure. restaurant how these nutrients help balance and help bring back balance to, that, to an infected body. You're going back to that plate, Kathy, and when we're looking at the distribution of now having half of a plate come from non-starchy vegetables, I think it's key and critical because now you're including more vitamins, more minerals, more antioxidants, all the things that you need to help, again, with m a multitude of disease states and that are chronic. Right. It's not just cancer, it's heart disease, it's diabetes, and you know, again, alluding to type two versus type one, but this is overall health for everybody. And again, if we can really truly analyze our plate and kind of start looking more intuitively at where vegetables can come into the mix, more plants versus the animals. Again, it just restructures the plate to make it where, again, the protein is just a side dish, right? It's not the main event. Right. Mm -hmm. And Shannon, that's yeah. a, that's one of your goals and one of your missions mm -hmm. with Grown. Can you talk 
talk a little bit about that and why it's important to incorporate this sort of thinking. Sure. I mean, I mean, I think people have been brainwashed a little bit to believe that um, fast food is something that comes out of a shiny package. You know, it always has to be a burger or fries. But the truth is, a banana is fast food. Right. You peel it and you eat it. An orange, <laughs> broccoli, point. It's tomatoes. the original. Fast food. You know, those are the original fast foods. <laughs> right. They were grown with water and love and sunshine, and they're ready for you. You don't have to do anything to them. Where these processed foods take months and years to be, you know perfectly perfected and preserved and have chemicals and all of this craziness that are really heavily chemically laden and that eventually breaks down our body and our gut bacteria and makes us feel sluggish and tired and lethargic. And I think as we're talking about grown, our, our mission really is to provide busy people with a better option, you know, an organic, delicious, nutrient dense, freshly prepared option so that busy people don't have to feel guilty. I mean, you said something earlier about, I think when people jump all the way in plant-based and they go completely hard and it's like all or none, and then they have a failure, they feel really guilty. We, do. we have enough stuff to feel guilty about. Dinner doesn't have to be Dinner one does. of them. Dinner's our time to come together, be yeah. with our families, enjoy what we're eating, have some mindful right. eating, exactly. not feel guilty. Exactly. And I feel like there's so much pressure to do everything perfect and everything all in. But any modicum of introducing more plants into your diet is better for you, your body, and the planet. We are on the verge of some real challenges with climate change and food insecurity and water safety and plant soil and soil health are going to be real challenges for us in the next 30 to 40 years right. and our kids are going yeah. to be struggling. So every amount that you can make, every effort that you can make to add more plants to your diet is better. And also, I would just the one thing that I always tell people is you have to remember something. When we sit down to a meal, we have an opportunity to fuel our bodies or to poison them. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. It's simple and it's uh It's so simple but it's, it's a hard so fact. Real. Yes. It's a hard fact. Food is supposed to fuel us to get us to our next meeting, interview, right. opportunity with a client, athletic performance, conference call, whatever, dance class. Food is there as fuel. So what do we want to eat? We want to eat the real stuff. We want to eat the organic stuff. We want to eat the fresh stuff. We want to eat a biodiverse plate. We want to eat the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Eat the rainbow. Eat, eat the, the rainbow. The rainbow. I, I mean, love you that. know this. What's Shannon. the one deficiency we have? Kids and children and, and families don't eat enough blue and purple vegetables. Yeah, I mean, but that's coming back to just making it interesting for the kids yeah. to eat the fruits and vegetables. But just to add on to what you're saying about, you know, again, our gut, our microbiome, again, that second brain, like you're, you know, you're discussing, it's real truthful. We just need to get rid of some of those processed foods like you're talking about and that comes back to refined carbohydrates sugar it's a multitude of things but again mm -hmm. when we go back to focusing on plants and when you're giving yourself I don't think we talk about fiber enough we've mentioned it but again it's focused in plants it's not in animals at all mm -hmm. and I think that fiber really truly is this like kind of hidden thing within the plants that's working wonders again lowering blood pressure lowering cholesterol again with blood sugars it helps to manage them versus just spike straight up so we have to talk more about that because of that's the reason of importance for plants and the other yeah. thing I want to get into on the flip side is a poor poor planning a plant mm -hmm. diet but before we get to that mm -hmm. there is something you just mentioned and Amy just yeah. mentioned which is I'm a mom yes I got two kids <laughs> I mean one loves her vegetables the other one not so much mm -hmm. so I'm always going crazy trying to find out how can we incorporate this vegetable these fun veggies in their meals so yeah. not necessarily hide them right but encourage them to eat them. So how do you do that? Listen, it's a challenge for everyone. And if I sat here and was like, oh, all my yep. kids eat all the vegetables and my 14-year-old boy loves kale, I would be lying to you. <laughs> right. You know, he loves pasta. That's, yes. that's pasta. Yeah, that's what mine loves things. too. All he wants is pasta. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? He's growing right now. So I'm like, all right, well, whatever. You know, I talked to his pediatrician about it and he's a very healthy kid. Thank God. Thank you, God. Um, but ultimately, you want them to eat. That's the most important thing. But I would say get your kids involved in the kitchen. My nine-year-old win. If I start making dinner without him, he's mad at me. He's like, "Mom, you were supposed <laughs> right, to leave for me." Right, you left him out. You left out the sous chef. <laughs> exactly. So get your kids involved. When your kids are cutting vegetables, they're seasoning yeah. food. They're helping you make a salad. You know, they're helping you roast the chicken. They're turning the oven on. They're in there with their. You know, you have your real knife. They have their butter knives, and they're they're making a smoothie and juices. They feel like they have a pride and ownership, and you're they're going to eat more vegetables because they're a because part they of the made process. it right. My kids, and I'll tell you, this is the magic of grown, and I'm not just saying it because I created it. When you see five and six year olds, four year olds, nine year olds coming to a drive through window and asking for portobello mushroom yeah. with a side of broccoli and sweet mashed potatoes, <laughs> when they could be getting it's a burger and fries. Yeah. That sounds like a dream to it's me, honestly. <laughs> it is magic and I'm not kidding. Right. This no, really it's a great feeling. If you get them started early and you make it fun for them, 
maybe start with fruit. Fruit's a whole bunch more easy. You know, mm-hmm. sugar's the most I mean, what I, sub- substance in the world. Yeah, yes. what I would add on to that, Shannon, is I think that parents are role models. And I think, again, where you're talking yeah. about bringing them into the kitchen, it's critical to get them involved in taking ownership of what they're eating because it then tastes better. But also, parents have to model that behavior. If you have someone at the table and being on the same page that's not eating it, nine times out of ten, they mimic or emulate what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's real important to almost introduce it. We have the no yuck rule at the table, right? You know, there's no ooh, yuck, or gross. Yes, so really, I don't like that at my table No, either. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. but they're not going to like it every time you make it. And so that's that reintroduction of a vegetable and maybe in a different form so that they can try it and see the way they like it, right? right. It can be a broccoli tot, it can be broccoli soup, or it can mm-hmm. be just roasted broccoli. Right. Okay. Three different ways. You might not like all three of those and neither will your children. Mm-hmm. So it's like, again, think back to good experiences lead to them wanting to try right. more. You know, and again, focusing on the colors is fun for them too. Yeah. And you, and you, it interesting. And I want to go on, uh, talk now a little bit about that poor planning. We briefly mentioned yeah. an Oreo is not vegan. Right. Uh, you know, a candy is not vegan or plant-based. So what entails a good plant-based diet and what's a poor plant-based diet? Well, again, I think you already alluded to what's a poor plant-based diet. Right. You know, it could just be not healthy and balanced where you're looking at a structure of the plate. And again, now it's just, again, all pasta all the time, right? You now need to throw in some vegetables. You do need to throw in some beans or you do need to throw in. They can turn cashews into cheese. I mean, again, that's magic as well. <laughs> you know, there's ways to make the meal taste and, and look appealing, but it's really, truly balancing it. And again, when we come back to supplements and things that would be needed, not necessary. We can get everything from food and it comes back to, again, where your understanding of what a plate looks like, half is non-starchy vegetables, a quarter is protein from plant or animal, and again, a quarter is the whole grains. Right. So that's the structure of every meal, sitting down to look and say, hey, how can I make it balanced and healthy? That's where it's mm-hmm. at, and that's where we tell people to first start. And Shannon, before we go to break, yeah. I do want to mention that you actually added an all-plant menu. We did. To your menu, I grow in addition to the original menu that you have as yes. well, can you talk a little bit about that? So we have so many people. People are always like, oh, who's your target customer? Everyone. Everyone that wants to eat better. Right. And um, we had a lot of requests from our target customers that would say, um, you know, I, I would love to have a vegan menu. I would love to have a fully plant-based menu in addition to all of the options that you have, like Brussels and sweet mash and rice and beans and whatever. So we are so very fortunate that Marco Borges, who you guys know, he's really like the father of modern-day veganism, mm-hmm. just wrote this extraordinary book, The Green Print, which is the number one diet in America, the number two book in the country and he's a personal friend he and his wife Marilyn and Marco and I were just casually talking about grown and green print and what was happening and I said Marco you know it would be so amazing if if you went into any fast food restaurant in America that you could get a fully plant-based meal that was green print approved that you designed right and he said well let's start with grown and that was such a huge blessing for me because I really have him on a pedestal because he has so much knowledge yeah. and his intention is so pure. So that's exactly what he did. He and I went through his uh, book and we picked 10 recipe items that are now available at every grown location, fully plant-based, fully vegan, absolutely delicious. And we're going to show you how to get started in your own kitchen. If you have any questions for Shannon or Amy, please call in 855-796-4475. Now, we have an event I'm so excited to bring Mm. up. It's coming up called Eat Well, Move More, and Live Better. All three things we really love. And Amy and Shannon, tell us a little about the South Miami Hospital Community Health Fair, why you have to be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would just say Baptist Hospital Group does an incredible job with making free events available to the community. Mm -hmm. You can know your numbers. You can get more information. I'm on a panel discussion I'm super excited about. We're going to have some grown samples. But to really come out and be in a place where your community hospital wants to set you up for success with health and wellness is extraordinary. Amy, what would you add? No, I think you said it really well. I mean, again, tapping onto everything is free. So the screenings, we're going to do a cooking demo with one of the chefs here in the hospital. And like Shannon said, I mean, what place can you find a hospital cooking plant-based, right, and actually vegan? We're using a recipe from Marco's book. Yeah. On the panel, we'll also include a cardiologist and also a gastroenterologist. But the unique setting in that is that the gastroenterologist is actually a yoga teacher. And the cardiologist actually uses food as prescriptions for medicine. So, you <sighs> know, that. amazing. I love that. <laughs> right. You're everything looking- at your fingers. Tips. You have to go to this health fair. <laughs> Come down, everybody. Yes. Kids, face painting and snacks. I mean, again, yeah. even tea from Grow to Heal, our garden mm-hmm. within the hospital setting, will be there t- giving you gardening tips. So, again, getting you started to really, truly implement plant-based eating. Okay, you're giving us many reasons to say, <laughs> yes, we will be there. Okay, so we are talking a little bit about how we can do cook plant-based at home, which I think sometimes it's a little difficult. So, Amy, can you give us some tips as to... 
yeah. how we can get started at home to cook plant-based or even bring in more organic food into the household. Mm -hmm. I think it really starts with one change at a time and really aiming to stay consistent with it, Kathy. I think that it can be overwhelming when you sit down and look at it and think you have to change everything. We were just talking about that, you know? So one meal m might be as simple as switching out and doing a plant-based protein at that one meal. That's where Meatless Mondays originated, right? It doesn't have to be every meal is meatless, right. maybe just one, right? The other key component is looking back at that plate like I've discussed and really truly, are you eating enough vegetables? And I'm not picking on any culture I could say the Italian big pasta plate or a rice beans yucca plantain plate. In comparison, there's no non-starchy vegetables and that's where we have to really start fitting them in. So maybe your goal is to really implement and add a side salad, right? Mm -hmm. That might be your first step to making sure you have a vegetable at every meal. I like meal. that, baby mm -hmm. steps. You got it. Baby steps. Nothing full-fledged or else then you fall off and you're not doing what, you know, yeah. again, you intentionally plan to do. And again, for me, it's consistency, Kathy, right? It's like you've started it and now move on to the next part of what mm -hmm. you want to do and implement. And again, maybe Maybe it's experimenting with tofu or tempeh, mm -hmm. right? You know, to be able to cook and see, can I include this? And now this is my option. We have a coworker that just reached out to me for a recipe the other day. How do I cook tofu, right? You know, so if the want is there and again, not knowing how to do it, again, making the means to be able to do it and really learning about that process to switch out and now have a plant-based protein. And Absolutely. keeping it fun. I Absolutely. feel like, you know, I, I said earlier, you want to make sure that you're bringing your kids into the kitchen to let them be a part of the process of food prep. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember. Some of my best memories as a child, my dad grew a massive garden, a massive oh, organic amazing. garden. I give my dad so much credit. And he, he grew enough tomatoes and onions and peppers for all of my mom's sisters. They were all single black women living in Connecticut, you know, paid all the bills, put all the kids through college. And having these fresh vegetables that my dad and mom grew for them was like a huge benefit. And that's something that we've gotten really far right. away from. Even if you're growing oregano in a little tiny, you yeah. know, pot in yes. your apartment building, like it's something that you're growing. You're showing your kids that if you grow, you can eat. And we do that at our home too. My husband is very big on, on growing things on our balcony in our apartment. Yeah. So and the kids are very involved and they love it. Great news. We have a caller. We have May from Pembroke Pines. Hi, May. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hi, May. Do you have a question for Amy and Shannon? Yes, I would like to know what would be good to eat for um, diabetes and high blood pressure. That's a great question, mm. May. So it just really depends on your actual regimen right now, May. And what I mean by that is I, you know, where are your current levels at? What is your current medication regime? And again, really testing and knowing where you're starting to be able to kind of sit down and then plan what it is that you're eating. In general with diabetes, what we look at are the carbohydrates and limiting to them to the amount on what's on your plate. But again, balancing it then with the proteins and balancing it with those non-starchy vegetables. So again, within carbohydrates, looking at your portion. And again, that would help to create, again, where you're looking at blood sugars, not too too high and elevated level, but again, overall control. And that helps with the balance within the fiber from your non-starchy vegetables, and then also the protein as well. So again, it's looking at portions of the carbohydrates and again, knowing which ones, because again, where we said not all diets are created equal, not all carbs are created equal. And again, that can, you know, again, affect a blood sugar level. And again, we would look at the portion, so quality and quantity of those carbohydrates. And that helps with blood pressure as well, May. Thank you so much, May, for calling in. So I want to talk about a little bit quickly vegetables. We were talking about yes. vegetables. I think yep. it's so big, but the re it's remember, important to remember starchy and non-starchy, correct? Mm -hmm. So I know at, at Grown, you mm -hmm. really focus on those hearty vegetables, organic vegetables. Mm -hmm. So. What's on the menu that is a go-to and your your clients love? I would say every single day people order a ton of sweet potato mash, Brussels sprouts. These are things that we don't add olive oil to, butter oil, butter to, extra salt to. Um, people love broccoli. They love our salads, our fresh pressed juices, our organic mm -hmm. smoothies made with delicious frozen uh, organic fruits. Um, again, I mentioned our gluten-free blueberry pancakes. Someone will try to get maybe like a little bit of lean protein, either shrimp or grilled salmon, um, portobello mushrooms with quinoa. Um, and we do a farmer's market vegetable every day that comes from local organic certified farmers. So we switch that up every day. Small batch soups and farmer's market vegetables. Amy, we got 30 seconds and I want you to tell us yeah. why it's important to start incorporating that organic, organic diet, a plant-based diet into our diets, at least one step at a time. Mm. I think it comes back to health, right? Or whatever the person's purpose is in order to really try and implement and eat more healthy, Kathy. And I think that we can all benefit. You know, Shannon alluded to it just being an issue with soil and, you know, moving forward, we have to, you know, the climate change, et cetera. There's so many different reasons why we can tap in and all start eating more plants um, for health alone is a reason. And like you said, one change at a time and mm -hmm. really truly implementing and moving forward. Well, 
After the show, <laughs> I will be at the drive-thru window at Grown getting today's lunch. <laughs> Me too. Mushroom portobello sounds pretty amazing. But thank you both so much for being thank here, you. for sharing your story. Shannon, Amy, as usual, you are a queen. We loved having you on. So that's all the time we have. But be sure to join us next time on the Health Channel. All Health All the Time on South Florida PBS. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at All Health TV. And remember, you can take the Health Channel wherever you go by visiting our website, allhealthtv.com. You can watch the Health Channel live 24-7 or check out videos from previous episodes like this one. I'm Kathy Buccio. We'll see you next time. Thank you.